In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks about working on set as a makeup artist. Hey guys, what's up? It's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to share with you some things that I wish I would have known at the beginning of my career, especially when I was first starting out doing TV and film work. It's kind of a different world and I absolutely love it and in fact, it's mostly the kind of work that I do now, but there are just some kind of things and the way that it works is just like a little bit different than bridal or even photo shoots. It's just kind of like a different world. If you happen to be new to my channel, welcome. I'm a freelance makeup artist and licensed esthetician based out of Los Angeles. And if you enjoy these kind of makeup artist videos, then definitely consider subscribing. All right guys, let's get into it. Some of these things I learned in film school and some of these I had to kind of learn along the way through working as an assistant for other makeup artists and kind of trial and error. Let's go ahead and get into tip number one. First thing that you wanna know is that every department is responsible for their own thing. So don't try to help out um, because it can get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Let me give you a few examples. If you're doing a movie and you're working with like sweat or blood or dirt, anything like that that's not just kind of on the face makeup, it's something that goes into the hair or on wardrobe, it is so important to talk to the other departments before you apply anything. It is always easier to ask permission than forgiveness. So for example, let's say that um, there is a scene where someone falls in the dirt and then they get blood on themselves. So when you're establishing that look, you want to make sure that the costumer is right there with you because if you get any dirt or blood on their wardrobe and they don't have a backup shirt and they need it for the end of the day, if you're shooting multiple scenes in one day, then you can get in a lot of trouble. Same with the hair. You never want to touch or fix or move any hair. Even if someone gets their hair done first and then they come to your chair for makeup, you always wanna ask the hairstylist to move it out of the way so that you can have access to their face. You never wanna just like take the hair and like throw a clip in it because that can throw a dent and then it'll be on them. So it really is important. I know it kind of sounds intense and you're like, oh, I'm just trying to be helpful. Like it's not worth it, like trust me. <laughs> Let me give you another example. This may sound extreme as well, but like if let's say you're doing a company move, so you're shooting in one location for the first half of the day and then you're moving to another location. So you need to get all of your stuff out and move it to another place. It's really important to not touch anyone else's equipment. Um, just like you don't want anyone, you know, rubbaging through your makeup kit. It's the same deal with their camera equipment, but it's a lot of money and it's just not worth it. So like if, if you're trying to be helpful and like moving a camera case and for some reason it dropped, let's say it didn't drop, they get to the next location, they open it up and for some reason their lens is broken, like you can get in so much trouble. So, and in, in union shoots, you actually are not allowed to touch anything because the production can't cover you. Um, if an accident were to happen. So even like if an actor is like, oh, you're carrying so much stuff, like let me help you. Don't let them do it. And I know you're like, Shannon, that's extreme, but like, just like trust me on this one. Um, you don't wanna let them do it because if it drops and like they break their toe or you know, anything could happen, then production's gonna be like, why were they doing your job? You know what I mean? So while film is like a fun collaborative effort, like you are responsible for your department and your department only. Like if, you know, in extreme cases, like every once in a while, you have to use your judgment. Like let's say we are have a hard out at a location and we have to get all of our stuff outside of the building or production is gonna get fined a lot of money and you're finished with all your work and you're just dying to help and the production needs you, then like, you, it's up to you, but if you want to talk to a production assistant, you can maybe move like water bottles out or, you know, like cry, like help in some way, but it's just not worth it uh, because the consequences can be really high. Does that make sense? All right, number two is be prepared. So before you get on a set, you're going to be given a call sheet. Now, if a call sheet is done correctly, you can get a lot of really, really great information from it, but you also need to be able to look at the call sheet and read in between the lines and figure out what else you need. I have another video that I'll link in the description box giving you some ideas on what to bring if it's an outdoor shoot. And if you guys want another video like breaking down a call sheet and like giving you some kind of tips and tricks in that, then definitely let me know in the comment section below. Um, there are some things that 
kind of go outside of the makeup realm um, that are still kind of your responsibility, whether it be like things that you need if you're shooting in extreme weather or things that your actor might need. Let's say you're shooting in the desert, then you're definitely gonna want eye drops. Um, if you're shooting an overnight in the middle of nowhere, you're definitely gonna want a headlamp. Like things like that that you can kind of get information from the call sheet, but then you have to be able to use your judgment to look at like what it's actually gonna look like. And that's same with like asking the right questions to production when you're getting hired to make sure that all of your bases are covered. Cause sometimes it's not, <laughs> especially in low budget land. Ha! Huh. Would you guys like like a nightmare video? Cause I definitely have some nightmare stories about working on set. <laughs> make sure that you check the call sheet and your email the morning of, or just before you shoot. Um, because sometimes changes will be sent there, like especially like parking details or last minute changes or like, oh, actually we sent the wrong address, we're supposed to be here, you know, different little things like that. It's just a good habit to um, check it. Even sometimes you'll be like on your way to work and you'll get an email saying like, giving you more specific parking details, like, oh, we're parking on the third floor, you know, just things like that. So definitely make sure that you're prepared the night before and like read through every single thing on the call sheet. Um, and the email, and then additionally in the morning, uh, or just before you go to work, just give it another double check and make sure there haven't been any changes. Number three, don't be afraid to ask questions and to stand up for yourself in your department, but make sure that you're asking the right person. So like we talked about in number one, like every single person has a job and you know, a specific role that they play in creating a masterpiece <laughs> or just a film in, the, <laughs> in most cases. But um, you wanna make sure that you're talking to the right person. So what I would recommend is that you look up different film crew jobs and figure out what they do. And then you have a few options. Sometimes if it's a big set, I'll print out a call sheet and I'll have it. So when someone introduced themselves to me, um, I'll just look at the call sheet and see what position they are because usually that can be helpful later on. Um, you also need to study up on what each department does and how they benefit you because like I said it's all a collaborative effort. It really is important and it'll make you look like a total newbie and amateur if you don't know what each job is and like what their purpose is and then you ask them a question that's like definitely not their department. So do some research, um, figure out, and you know, it'll come naturally and the more you do it, the easier it'll get and you'll kind of start to understand this film language that is spoken um, the more you're on set. But if you're just getting started, just make sure you know like your first AD, your, your DP, your producer, your director, um, just make sure you know what all of those roles are and why they're important to you. So if there's like a lighting issue, then you can talk to the DP. If there's um, if there's a scheduling issue, you need to talk to the AD. If there's um, a creative question, you need to talk to the director. Just different things like that. And if you guys want, I can definitely do another video um, kind of breaking those down and telling you what you need to know. But let me know if you're interested in that because it's a whole thing. Okay, let's go on to number four. Number four is be aware of your space when you're on set. So that is anything from like watching where you're stepping, making sure you don't step on any cords, um, bringing a set chair so you're not sitting in chairs that are designated for talent or directors, things like that. Um, also, be aware of like your conversations. Like you definitely don't want to be the loudest person in the room. Is that you're spending so much time with these people, with the crew and everything, and so you're gonna build friendships and it's gonna become, you know, a family. But it is important to still maintain that level of professionalism um, if you want to get hired again. <laughs> and number five, this is just kind of an interesting note. Um, things that I didn't really know, and it kind of does play back into number three about like knowing who's who on a film set. So for example, like let's say you're putting hair, you're gonna spray hairspray um, on talent and the camera's right here. You wanna make sure you let the camera operator know um, that you're gonna be spraying hairspray. So you can either say like spraying or it'll be like, hey, I'm gonna, is it okay if I spray some hairspray? Especially if the lens is really close. Cause let's say we're like running to get a shot, which is generally 
the case and you spray a bunch of hairspray and the residual hairspray gets on the camera lens then you're gonna hold up the entire production because they're gonna have to stop and clean that lens so you definitely want to make sure that in some cases the camera operators will be like oh it's fine you're far enough away but in other cases they'll need to cover the camera or move it away um, just because you don't want to hold up production so definitely make sure like you say spraying or you let someone know before you are uh, that'll really help you look professional as well as um, make it look like you know what you're doing does that make sense also too that goes like if you're gonna be spraying sweat on someone like water um, you of course want to let wardrobe know but you also want to let sound know because most of them will be wearing a microphone and if you get that microphone but you do not it will not be a good day for you so if you're spraying water um, and sometimes if if the sound person knows what you're doing they'll kind of come up to you and be like hey by the way the lava is right here right here so just be careful um, but it doesn't always work that way so you just kind of want to be one step ahead of the game and and just let someone know like hey we're gonna be doing sweat I'm gonna be spraying it all over his you know front or wardrobe I'm gonna be spraying it on the back like just a heads up and then they'll usually cover the mic you know figure it out also too just which you know maybe that maybe I need to do like a whole film lingo video Whew. okay I was just doing like quick tips and hopefully this will be helpful but just another just quick tip is that um, when you're crossing in front of a camera so like let's say talent let's use my camera as an example so let's say I'm talent so I'm sitting in front of the camera and you need to do a touch up on me so you're coming in this way and you're crossing in front of the lens you need to say crossing um, because that will if the guy or girl behind the camera is like doing focus or something it can totally throw off their balance so you just want to say like crossing right as you're crossing in front of the lens and there are kind of a couple other maybe this needs to be a separate video let me know if you're interested if this is interesting to you and and we can kind of expand on the topic but I'm hoping that these little five tips will help you feel just a little bit more comfortable on a film set it's always kind of like the first day of school that happens constantly but then on a long project by the end you're it's like family <laughs> but there always is kind of that like new day jitter to kind of get the lay of the land um, but it's incredibly rewarding and I absolutely love this kind of specific genre of the industry all right guys that is it for me for this week give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions about um, production work or film lingo or what kind of videos you'd like to see next kind of in this series and I hope you're having an awesome week and I'll catch you in the next video bye guys